Hello everyone. Good morning. So today we are going to talk about uh, at Intuit how we are leveraging open source MLflow for doing various kind of experiment stacking. We are mainly focusing on LLM powered applications. So first of all, I'm Manas. Uh, I'm from Intuit. I'm a platform architect. Uh, for the last one and a half year, we have been using MLflow. Uh, so in this short talk, we'll be mainly covering. Uh, this is our today's agenda. First, we'll be talking briefly about the LLM applications that we have been building and why we have. Then we'll talk about how, why we have selected open source MLflow instead of any other managed solution. Then we'll talk about the evaluation process. Finally, the tracking and selection and how it connects to the review process as well as the dev to prod journey. So uh, by this time, all of us are familiar with uh, LLM powered applications. We have used different kind of chat experiences, different kind of summarizations tools, and et cetera. So at Intuit, we also have been building this kind of LLM powered applications and these applications are embedded within our major products within QuickBooks, MailChimp, Fed Karma, and TurboTax. So these are helping customers to do their business. For example, in QuickBooks, we have a, a small business guide called Intuit Assist. Uh, in MailChimp, we have a launch announcement for marketers. So for these applications, uh, there is a real need of experiment tracking because LLM being probabilistic in nature, uh, it, is, it is not like typical software where we have a fixed input and it goes through a logic and will get a deterministic output. A lot of experimentations are done to de during uh, development of these applications. Experimentations are done using various kind of prompts, various kind of guardrails. So uh, for this kind of exploration, whenever we take an application from development to production, we need to make sure that the applications are of highest quality and the AI driven solutions are reliable. And it is not like a one-time uh, deployment, right? It, just like typical software, it is it evolves over time because every day there are newer models coming up. Uh, there are different kind of prompting strategy. There are different kind of evaluation strategy. So it is a continuous process. So at, from the platform side, we make sure like that this experiment tracking software we are doing it is it is uh, it is all, all those data is actually persisted in our database so that we can reproduce these runs over time. Now we'll uh, talk about why we have selected open source MLflow. Why not any managed solution? So the first and uh, first most important thing is the flexibility across cloud platforms. Because uh, within Intuit, uh, different ML users use different kind of tools, services. They use local notebooks, Jupyters, as well as different uh, cloud vendor provided notebooks solutions. So there is a real need of some kind of a unified experiment tracking solutions so that they don't need to switch tool. I mean, if they are in a one solutions, they don't need to just log into an, another portal just to do the experiment tracking. So that is one of the main thing why we have selected uh, um, open source MLflow where we have deployed this thing in a Kubernetes cluster. We have created a uh, UI so that people across, uh, irrespective of what client tools they are using or what clouds they are using, they can use it um, seamlessly. Another reason is uh, multi-tenant solutions because there are thousands of thousands of users. Uh, we want to make sure like, okay, whatever experiments we are showing, it is only related to them. Um, so that is another reason. Second uh, most important reason is uh, self-managed uh, backend data. So if we had used uh, any vendor managed solutions, then the data was managed by them, right? But as a platform team, we collect a lot of metadata at our backend. And this experiment tracking data is also very important. So we need to join these two data sets to build various kind of reports, dashboards for different stakeholders. So if we had a cloud managed solutions, we had to download the data from the backend managed cloud data using API. We need to download the data, then we need to join with our backend data store. It was cumbersome and it was, it was error prone. But open source MLflow gives an option that where during the installation, we can choose the backend store we use. So, so Whenever we are just starting the MLflow server, we are creating the MLflow backend schema in the same database where we have other data, data tables. That helps us join the data with our internal proprietary data and it helps to build the tools, uh, build the various dashboards and various experiences. And the third reason is we didn't want to build something from scratch. Uh, MLflow is really an awesome tool. It, has, it offers a lot of features and there is a very vibrant MLflow development community. So we, we really wanted to leverage these features. 
Now this is like the app evaluations workflow. Uh, this is what we follow at Intuit, but I think this is a uh, very standard workflow in, uh, in any, any, any similar setup. So we have a UI, in the UI end users can come and for this kind of evaluation, there are two main things. One is the evaluation data. It may or may not have ground truth data. And the other thing is uh, matrix, like what matrix they want to calculate. Some matrix require ground truth. Uh, using that, you can calculate accuracy, precision, and recalls, and other, other data. And some of the things can be done without ground truth, like different kind of auto evals, hallucinations. If the answers are relevant or not, these are the matrix can be calculated. So for internal purpose, we have created an internal evaluation SDK. It is basically the same kind of matrix, whatever we see in the open source SDK. But since our LLMs are behind an LLM proxy, we couldn't use the open source SDKs as is. We created a light wrapper to standardize the invocations of the LLM. So if you see the flow over here, an end user come go to the portal. They can just configure their data set. Uh, we have come, we came up with a, a DSL kind of thing, but using that they can just configure all the metrics and they can mention how they want to track the experiments. And after that, they simply click evaluate. It doesn't need to be on the UI. There are APIs out there, so they can invoke the same process from their notebook as well. Behind the scene, we run the evaluations on a scalable infrastructure. We use Kubernetes and on top of that for orchestration, we use Qflow. So these are various components in the Qflow. So there are some of the components are fixed. Some of the components are like end users can inject uh, during the setup process. So as you can see, there is a uh, there is a uh, config component. There is a sampling. They can downsample the data because if there are too much data in productions, they want don't want to just try out the run the experiment with let's say hundred thousand records. They downsample it. They downsample it using simple sampling strategy or stratified sampling strategy. After that, sometimes they do the data cleaning before feeding the data to the eval component. So we have a fixed data processing component, but they can bring their own pre-processing logic in the form of Docker, and they can inject it in this component. And this is the fourth one is the most important. This is the uh, app eval component, which wraps our internal SDK, the evaluator SDK. It could be any other SDKs. We most, mostly focus on this one. Uh, there we are adding some domain specific and custom mask metrics over there. And under the hood, this M this SDK is using MLflow. Uh, so whenever we generate the uh, tags, matrix, and artifacts, we push it to the end users uh, configured experiment over there. And end users can do various kind of comparisons and they can take it to the next phase. And as, you, as I mentioned over here, there is another component called AppEval component. It is just like a placeholder component. There is a template. They can just experiment with any other open source or enterprise libraries as well during this experimentation. And when the experimentation is done, then using Slack and using email, we send notifications and user get a deep link of that email flow run view. And from there, they can see like what all metrics are calculated, how, how it works there. In a nutshell, they, uh, they try, users try with various prompts, various parameters, card drills. They uh, use their own evaluation data set. These evaluation data sets often, often these are application specific. They can use LLM as a judge, and they can come up with various rubric-based metrics. For traditional uh, metrics like blue score and bar score and various embeddings to figure out like the relevance and trustworthiness, these metrics are also defined in a simple uh, metrics library. They can always extend it. These all these evaluations are executed in batch mode on top of Kubernetes and using Kubeflow, uh, using Kubeflow, and the results are captured using MLflow. So if I just drill down that. Um, app eval component. So if you see, there are two things. In the left-hand side, the end users mention the evaluation data. It is basically user prompt. It, it could be a CSV data or any other party or any other files. Over there, they mention the user prompt, system prompt reference. They sometimes store the system prompt in some persistent storage, and they use the system prompt reference and the expected answer. Expected answer is required whenever they use LLM as a judge LLM uh, to compare the expected answer and the actual application response. And another thing is this config where the users mention different kind of matrix. It could be auto eval without ground truth or rubric based matrix, or they can always bring their own matrix. And the other component is like the ML for experiment config. They just simply mention like uh, the name of their application. There is an internal identifier we use and the experiment name. So this is where the application, the, all the runs get tracked. And the right hand side, it is basically the wrapper component which I mentioned in in this previous one the fourth component so this is the like a drill down view of that so this is our internal 
evaluated SDK. It could be, as I mentioned earlier, it could be any other open source SDK or enterprise solutions. We create a uh, MLflow context manager. We run the evaluation in scale on top of Kubernetes. We generate the reports and using MLflow, we log the metrics, log the tags and log all the artifacts. So if you see, this is a typical run, uh, looks like. So we, cal we calculated all the metrics over here. And in the bottom, we have calculated, we have actually captured in some artifacts. So whatever end users has uploaded in the first place as evaluation data for each and every user prompt system from combinations, we calculated various metrics like BART score, blue score, and various percentiles of that. So end users, data scientists, other users, they can just look into this data and they can figure out what are the blind spot in which all cases it is not working in the expected way. So there could be a lot of such runs and using MLflow's native feature, they can compare the runs and they can choose which prompt is working, which guardrails are producing the best result. Uh, so all these things are done using MLflow's native feature. We have not built anything uh, customized over here. Uh, now, if you see, uh, the MLflow is powering the entire uh, LLM powered app lifecycle. It's similar to MDLC, whatever we're doing and try for traditional ML models. So basically in a nutshell, if you see the JNI app developer, they go to a portal, they just set up the evaluation data, evaluation metric. They try out with various model parameters, configs and various prompts. They also try out various kind of guardrail settings. Ultimately the evaluations run happens in a scalable infrastructure. We use our internal SDK and uh, as I mentioned again, like uh, it, it, could, it need not be like an internal SDK, it can be any other open source SDKs or any enterprise solutions. Every solution has APIs, you can trigger it in scale. And finally, uh, the run selection, review, and dev to prod happens in, in, in the third section. So out of multiple runs, end users choose the best one. Then they submit it for a review. So there are domain experts. Uh, they review the, all the settings, stones, and, and, the, and the context and everything in the, in the prompt. They said like, okay, the guardrails are fine or not. And everything, if everything goes well, then the reviewers approve the applications and that is when we update all the settings to a config server. If it is rejected, then end users start the, the evaluations again. So this is how the in, entire applications happen in the, in, the, in the development time. In the runtime, if you see uh, LLM powered applications are there, end users interact with these LLM powered apps. Behind the scenes, we have a, we, we, that is where in the guardrails runtime, that is where the actual application logic sits. So different applications are built using various framework, Lang chain and others, internal frameworks. And that is when in the runtime, we also apply the guardrails which were approved in the first place during the, the review phase. And if everything goes well, the, um, the call actually gets forwarded to our internal LLM gateway and we invoke the external or fine-tuned LLMs. So this, this is how MLflow powered the entire um, LLM-powered app lifecycle, right? And it is not like the first time and do developers iterate on the prompts on, on top of the guardrails. So every time the same process happens and we track the end-to-end -end lineage. So <clears throat> this is the final section. So this is uh, some of the things we are evaluating right now. So as part of MLflow's 2.8 release, um, we, we saw that there is a really nice feature, MLflow Evaluate. It, it offers like LM, uh, MLflow evaluations. We couldn't use it as is because we have our own LLM gateway. And these, these uh, features actually expect that, okay, it interacts with the vendor specific contracts, but we have our own LLM gateway, so we couldn't use it as is. And we are working with the MLflow team to see if there is any way we can, uh, we can call our internal LLM gateway proxy instead of calling the vendors directly. It is a very powerful thing. So if you have not tried it, I highly recommend you to just evaluate it. Second thing we are working is this, uh, all LLMs have benchmark data set but that doesn't work that well with the applications because applications has various requirements, various use cases. So we are trying to come up with various app or domain specific data sets. And then we are just trying to wrap using the data set API, which MLflow has released very recently. Um, these are some of the explorations which are happening. And in the enhancement proposal, first of all, MLflow is great. Uh, we are leveraging it for the last one and a half year. We are really happy about it, but these are some of the things we have observed. If we had this thing in the first place, uh, then we could have avoided some of the reverse engineering. Uh, one, one main thing is like need for UI plugins. All right, so there are various button, uh, buttons over there, various controls. So MLflow has a lot of features. For example, it has a model registry feature, it has prompt management features, but we couldn't use all of those as is because some of the things were existing in the production for more than three, four years. So if we had 
some kind of UI controls um, or UI um, plugins, then we could have overridden some of the default behavior. For example, for typical models, we had to override the register model option. And whenever users click the register model option, we start our model registry workflow, not the default ML flow things. If we had the UI plugins, um, it would have been a lot easier. Second thing is experiment tagging. So we have a single deployment of ML flow on, on Kubernetes. Right, it get used by thousands of users. So in the left hand side nav, there is an experiments tab. We don't want to show thousands and thousands of experience to uh, individual users because it would be overwhelming. But if we had um, experiment tagging, then using our rollback um, uh, access mechanism, we could have uh, shown only the experiments related to a team or a project or a model. Right, so we didn't have this thing out of the box. Experiment taggings are there from the in the backend API, but those are not available in the UI. So we had to basically remove the default experiments tab and we need to do some customizations to enable this role-based access control. And we also enabled this thing as a multi-tenant solution. And finally, uh, we are also um, leveraging the, the email flows evaluate features. So for, for direct calling a LLM, there is a way you can just use a function in the place of an uh, in a model and you can call the proxy servers. But if we want to use this specific thing, it's called uh, make JNI metric. It's a very powerful API using that you can, and users can come up with their own metric, rubric based uh, metrics. But it always expects that the model uh, is deployed in MLflow, uh, MLflow deployments that we don't use. Um, I wish we had this feature so that we could have, uh, we, we could have invoked our internal uh, MLflow proxy uh, gateway instead of the uh, directly MLflow deployments. And these are experimental features Whenever it will get matured, probably we'll look into these things that right? if we can reverse this thing as is. So this uh, concludes my presentations and I'm extremely uh, happy to leverage MLflow and part of this bigger community. And we are building various features. Some of those things are generic, some are too into specifics. And we'll try to make sure that some of the generic features will contribute back to the community so that um, we can all leverage each other's great work. So thank you. If you have any question, please feel to ask.